How are you doing, folks? I hope your winter tying is going well for everybody. Uh, today, I am going to tie you a streamer pattern. This is a grey and silver minky pattern that I've used over the last number of seasons. And while I find it's very effective in the springtime for lock trout, um, it can also be quite good during the winter months when you're bank fishing, filling in those winter hours. Um, on the banks around Ireland and um, you're looking for some rainbows this can be quite effective as well simple enough pattern and um, very effective so to begin I have a Dohaku streamer size 8 hook in the voice and I'm going to add on my tying silk just gonna nice bit of that down out there take away the waste and bring my thread down to the bend of the hook. So, first thing I want to add in is my tail. So, for my tail, I'm going to take some UV polar chenille from Flybox in silver, as you can see, like so. And I'm going to take some of those chenille strands off the stem to make a tail. So, just Select a pinch of them. Tease out just what you need. Snip them away. And you've got a nice little tailor. So we're just going to add that in into the butt of the fly. To begin. Secure them well. Tidy it up. My next component is the ribbing material. This is what will be used <clears throat> to hold down the minky strip when I pull it along the back of the fly. So it's 0.14 clear mono. And I'm going to secure that in well. Make sure that's tied in really tight and secure. Because the last thing you want to do is when you're finished the fly and pulling that strip down over the back and using that rib that it will come loose on you. So I put a lot of tension on that thread there and really get that secure. Now, for my body, I'm using UV Straggle Fritz in silver. This particular one is by Solarini. And I like this on my body. And for those of you that get my silver dabblers off me, you'll recognize this body because this is a body I use in one of my silver dabbler variations. So, bring your thread up towards the eye hook. And begin to tie in your your body. Just wind it on there. I'm going to brush it all out now in a moment. Nice tight turns up the body. Stop a bit short of the eye. Leave a bit of room at the head. We've got plenty of stuff to go in there in a, in a moment. So snip away your waist. Just tidy up. And then with my ever truthful, trustful dubbing brush, get that, all those fibres out. Get them all folding back, creating a nice bed for the minky strip going on top. On the dark winter days in, in stocky bashing and the, the banks, this fly has a nice bit of flash about it that. Um, just trigger those takes as well. So for my minky strip, I'm using a piece of rabbit, which is dyed grey, has light tips on it. And I'm gonna add that in on top. So you can see it tying down the first strip a little bit just to give a really good I'm gonna tidy all that up there now in a few moments. <coughs> so in order to tie the rivet, all I do is a wet There's the, the fur between my fingers. Let's get it standing straight up. This makes ribbon the zonker strip up the body very easy. And as you bring your rib up, you can just pull it in between. In between. 
between the upstanding damp fur. Keeping good tension in it, these flies get a lot of plucking and pulling from fish, so they need to be well secured, good and strong. Take your time and build your fly. Working my way up towards the head of the flight. Up there. A couple of turns of tray just over the top. Just securing that. The tension is released off the mono and put onto the tray so nothing moves. Everything is nice and tight. And I'll double back on that mono as well. Back down the body. Another couple of turns on top. But that's just extra safety precaution to make sure. That rib is going nowhere. And there we have our zonker strip in over the back of the fly. Now, it's your preference of how long you want that zonker strip. If I was fishing for wild brown trout, I mightn't have it quite as long as I would for when I'm fishing for stocked rainbows. Where movement is a real key factor, and the wild movement is a key factor for the browns. Um, I certainly find a shorter length zonker just as effective for the browns as a long one. But with the rainbows, I like to keep it that little bit longer to have that extra bit of um, wiggle in the tail. Now, for the next addition to our fly, we're going to take some strands of silver crinkle and I'm going to put some strips down either side of that fly either side of the tail should I say, the wing and the tail secure it all in well when that get, all gets wet and gets moving, there's a lovely, lovely flash. I want that fly. Now, for my head, I'm going to take some metallic red dubbin. What I'm doing is just breaking it. Not cutting it, just breaking it, just shorten it up a bit. And I'm going to form a little dubbing brush there. So taking my needle, splitting the Kevlar thread. Which is really easy to split. I'm taking my pinch of red metallic dubbing. And just shove it in there between the two strands. Like so. Spin your thread bobbin. You're forming a little dubbing brush. And a couple of spins there to get nice and tight. You could dub it on in a standard manner and then brush it out afterwards, but I find just to, it can be just a little bit bulky up on the head where I just like kind of a almost like a little hackle effect at the head of this um, metallic dubbing going around the head, going around the head and just falling back onto the, the body. So once I've got that spun on, I just start winding it up. Pushing it back at the same time. And then you have a nice, nice subtle, well tapered, holographic red metallic head there. Last thing, I'm going to add in a pair of jungle cock eyes. So, I'm just going to select 
two jungle cockeries. I often wonder how long do I spend searching through capes of jungle cock looking for that perfect shape that I for each different fly I tie when I'm using it. Um, Just stripping the down off the jungle cock. I'm going to place it in there to the side. Let it come back a bit on the fly. A couple of turns to secure it in. Around your fly on the side. And the same on this side. Couple of nice tight turns there just to secure that in. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to just uh, tidy up some of that waste. Of course, I tie this fly also in a snake version, which means you have that trailer hook and it's much longer and um, has a really effective, really effective snake pattern. So just tidy up there at the head, nice and clean. What I'm going to do now is put a black head on it. So I take my black sharpie, colour in my Kevlar, just put a little bit up there. Give it a zip of that, holding everything back out of the way. A couple of turns around. Just doing it a little bit because I want to have enough for the whip finish as well. Just make sure it all it's covered in a nice clean black head. A little bit of something there. Just clean up this. Perfect. And then our whip finish. And then just to finish it off, a little bit of varnish. Just to give that head a little bit of protection it needs to keep the flight good and sturdy. And there you have it. Grey and silver streamer, minky streamer, with a red metallic head, jungle cock cheeks. And um, if you have fry chasers, springtime or rainbows that'll do a bit of chasing during the winter months and I guarantee that fly won't let you down. Well worth having your box. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the time and the fish just as much. See you soon.